This is Civilisitopedia. In this episode, you will learn about what was discovered in the tomb of the richest pharaoh. Come on. A golden mask with blue lines depicting a young and serious face. Perhaps the most famous relic in the world. In one glance, millions of people will unambiguously name the owner of this mask, Tutankhamun. Amun or King Tut. There are these mysteries in these letters, but it would be strange to expect anything else from a nine-year-old boy who ascended the throne at that age and quickly married one of his sisters to strengthen the family, although it was a marriage of convenience. But the evidence shows that it was a happy marriage and who can be named. The happy ones are those who were under the close supervision of the pharaoh. If we believe the scientific data, the pharaoh enjoyed recognition because of the correct decisions and because of the measures beneficial to society. For example, he invested actively in construction, including the construction of a temple for the god Amun-Ra. But his life is difficult to say was happy, and despite all the positive external factors, he was very weak, and despite his young age, he walked with a cane as a result of bone necrosis in his left foot. The young ruler suffered from a rare genetic disorder called elephant clip syndrome, where the bones in his neck were fused and his head could not be moved completely. His back was also curved due to scoliosis. He had a cleft palate, according to tests. Perhaps he was suffering from malaria. You have to admit that for the ruler, many diseases are very rare. At the very least, he is constantly cared for, bathed in the best bathrooms, and is assisted by expert doctors. But whatever the case, there was nothing that would help in treating congenital diseases, even in an advanced people like the Egyptians, as it is. He fell. He did not live long and died at the age of 19, but scientists did not understand the reason for this. It was believed that it was because he was hit in the skull, but archaeologists said that the destruction of the bone occurred when the golden mask was removed from water in the 20s. Another theory of death says that the boy fell during a chariot race, and this is strange. Also, it does not resemble reality very much, to put it mildly, and it is unlikely that people will be able to fully understand the reason unless we invent a time machine. But what we can explore now is the amazing tomb of King Tut. Surprisingly, it has remained in almost perfect condition and was not damaged by the hands of thieves or natural disasters. It was found at the beginning of the 20th century, and at first, it was not known who it belonged to because the grave was suddenly very humble. It is not known whether this was due to his young age or whether it was due to his sudden death. It is just that in Egypt, there were rules requiring 70 days to pass between death and burial at this time. It was impossible to prepare a suitable grave for it, so it ended up as people found it. But there are several relics worth noting. For example, there is an arch, a throne, an alabaster bowl, food, wine, and clean underwear. When these pieces were studied, scientists realized that they were much more valuable than people had previously thought. The dagger, the ornate golden sheath made of meteorite, is of incredible value. These artifacts were also made of materials from different countries at that time, which also helped scholars draw similarities and understand the relationships between these or those countries in previous years. Have you ever heard of the Saqqara Complex? It is an ancient cemetery located on a plateau in the Nile Valley. It contains many ancient burials, tombs, and pyramids. It turns out that, among other things, an amazing tomb was hidden in this complex, which is estimated to be more than 4,400 years old. It was found a few years ago, but people were not able to enter it. This is not a building where you can just knock down the wall. It was important to have a clear, mathematically proven approach that does not damage the internal structure and opens up something new and wonderful for people. This is what happened. The blocked passages were finally overcome, and the researchers found themselves in a rectangular room measuring 10 meters long from north to south and 3 meters wide and high. There is a basement in the corner. It is assumed that this is the tomb of a high-ranking priest. It is surprising that there is no word about him in the legends. At the same time, his tomb is full of hieroglyphic writings and statues of the pharaohs. And it is not surprising that this tomb was called the Unique Shaft. 
In recent decades, the frescoes depict the high priest resting with his mother, his wife, and other relatives. And there are a number of unique letters that are not easy to decipher. Perhaps they will reveal to us the secret of who this man is, but it is difficult to believe that. After all, it was not in vain that the priests at that time were on the same level as the local gods. They established contacts with higher beings, and for this they obtained eternal recognition of the population and personally of the pharaohs and other segments of society. A royal hideout, speaking of the elite of society. Judging by the discoveries of modern scientists, there were tombs in which dozens of mummies of the pharaohs and their family members were present. About 40 of the greatest pharaohs rest in the same place. The place, and next to them, there are more than 6,000 precious pieces, each of which belongs to the era of the ruler in one way or another. 320 The royal cache of mummies that he is talking about was in Thebe Cemetery, no. 320, its entrance is hidden in the rocks. All Egyptologists confirm that it is certainly one of the richest tombs in history. It also one of the most exceptional tombs and took five years to extract the items. The hot July sun, the smell of the sweat of dozens of workers lifting the finds, and the foul smell of torches made the work unbearable, but it was worth it. The antiquities were transported manually to the Nile River where they were loaded onto a ship belonging to the Department of Antiquities and sent to scientists.